cold day here in New York City. And uh, today we're going to talk about gaps. This is a great time of the year to start to think about trading. Why? Because we're getting into the end of 2020 and it's a good time to prepare yourself for the next calendar year. Now, what I do, as Fausto said, is focus on gaps. Gaps typically happen in the four quarterly earnings seasons, which again, earnings season is not right now. Earnings season will start in January, 2021. We have a few late earnings right now. Adobe reported last night. Costco is tonight. Uh, there's a couple late ones here towards the end of the year. But now is a good time to prep for 2021. If you have not met your goals for 2020, which some people have exceeded their goals for 2020, some people have fallen short of their goals for 2020. I'm talking about financially and trading wise. It was really a year for the books. Uh, personally here, because we were, we were in lockdown the whole year in New York and we're still in lockdown here in New York, I felt like this year was a very active year for me. Uh, whether or not that continues into 2021, I do not know. I, I think we're at a point now where no one knows where the future is. And the nice thing about active trading, which is either you can do for options or day trading, I do both is, you don't care what the long-term trend necessarily is of the market or stocks. When you are actively trading, you're getting in positions and you're getting out with profit. You're in, you're out, you're in, you're out. That could be in several minutes, that could be in several hours, that could be in just a couple of days. So I, I consider what I do an active strategy. So this isn't long-term investing, okay? Trading is you are chunking it out. You are going into a, a stock, you were getting the momentum of that move, whatever that move happens to be, and then you're booking the profits and you're getting out. So you're going long and you're going short, or you're buying calls or you're buying puts. And for those of you, I'll talk about a couple options trades in this, in this webinar today, <coughs> excuse me, but I just do simple calls and puts. Uh, the options that I do are not any fancy dancy strategies. Everything I do is based on my gap rating system. So this is me. If you have any questions, you can email me at melissa at thestockswoosh.com, or you can feel free to call me at 929 gap You can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, or Skype, and I have all my TV hits. I usually post them on YouTube after the fact. Again, this has been a very interesting year to trade. Right now, the market's been choppy. Yesterday, we sold off. I will tell you that we were in shorts before the market sold off yesterday. The trades were down until they went. So they were down until they went up. If we hadn't been in those short positions before the drop off, I don't think I would have gotten them because we fell out of nowhere uh, between 11 o'clock and 12 o'clock Eastern time. So I read what was going to happen. I anticipated it and got in the trains, you know, early enough to get the move, not knowing exactly the second that the move would come in. And I did that because I read gaps. So how do gaps work? A stock gaps when the close of the market or any single stock is different from the open. Stocks can get down, stocks can get up. The market gaps almost every single day. When I talk about the market, I mean the QQQs or the SPY, or you could even look at the diamonds, which is the DIA as far as the ticker symbol. I tend to look at the SPY, but I do look at the QQQs as well. So a gap is just the difference between the close and the open. And that's what I look at. And I look at it in the pre-market, okay? Or you could look at it in the post-market. Again, there are some earnings tonight. You can watch Costco tonight to see what happens after four o'clock. So trains occur, positions are put on or taken off in that post-market and pre-market time. If you do not know how to look at post-market or pre-market activity, well, that's something that you come and learn from me. Uh, basically, you can look at it on your level two or you can look at it on a chart if you can look at your pre and post-market data. Now, what is a gap? Again, let's just go over a daily chart here. This is Amazon. Uh, as you see here, going back this whole month of November and December, this is Amazon's daily chart, the stock has been pretty much in a range, okay? It's been basing out here in tight range. Now, I don't have the, the SPY up right now. If we have time, I'll talk to you about the market at the end. But the market has made new highs. In fact, the market made new highs yesterday. We were short when that occurred. So the market's made new brand new all-time highs, and yet you've had many, many stocks that have not. Typically the tech sector, Amazon, Apple, Netflix, all the things normally that would drive the market have been lagging. So that was one thing that I noticed, which told me that there wasn't gonna be the follow through in the market. 
The irony is that people are buying the market here today. This is a terrible place to be going long the market, in my opinion. Not even for a day trade would I go long the market here. Yes, it's still strong. Yes, it's in an uptrend. Yes, it's on support, but I wouldn't be taking uh, the market long here. Anyways, let's take a look at what a gap is, just to go over a basic definition of it. This is back first week in November. Uh, the stock had a gap up. Closed here, gapped up. So but closed here at one price around 32.50 or something of thereabouts. Then it gapped up here to 3,300. So this was a bullish gap. So this was a bullish gap. What is a bearish gap when it gaps down? Stock closed here, gapped down. Okay, so it closed around here and then opened at a different price lower the following day. Fell, that's what the tail is, and then bounced back. Then it gapped down again, fell. Then it closed here, gapped down. Then it closed here, gapped up, rally. So there are bullish gaps and there are bearish gaps in this chart. So what do I do? I get up in the morning early and I determine if I'm going to, what stocks I'm going to trade for one thing. Whether I'm going to do them as day trades or options, Amazon is something that it's very cost effective to do it as an option. It's a very expensive stock to day trade. I do not day trade this as far as uh, an equity train. This makes more sense to do as an option. The benefit of options, if you've never traded options is, you don't have to worry about margin, <clears throat> which is good if you have a small account or even if you want to trade very expensive stocks, which Amazon is. It's the most expensive thing, I think, in the market. But again, getting back to what I was saying, there's many, many gaps in here. Not every gap up can you go long. Not every gap down can you short, okay? So I developed a method where I figure everything out in the morning early or sometimes at night, but I usually wait to the morning because things can change from the nighttime to the morning. And I figure out what stocks I want to trade in and what direction based on the gap. So everything I do is based on the gap. Why? Because gaps equal shock. Okay. That is, that is when you have a gap, okay, it's shocking. Again, this could be up, this could be down. It's something that happens that is unexpected, okay? It's shock, shock, shock. So this gives you a, something as an active trader to play on, okay? Shock equals what? Panic. And again, you could have panic buying or you could have panic selling, okay? I love to short. I probably, in fact, I know without even looking at every single trade I've taken since January, I've shorted more than I've gone long. And typically year over year, that's what I like to focus on. So shock equals panic. And sometimes what happens is people will do panic buying. You've seen that in stocks like Tesla. Oh my gosh, we got to get in. It's going higher. We got to take it. We got to get in. Sometimes you see that in stocks like Apple, things that people love to go long. Okay. They quick, got to get it, got to get it. And in selling, okay, you see that. And we saw that in the market yesterday when you had panic selling. Again, I do not follow fundamentals. I am aware of what happens in the news because I, I appear on news programs, but yesterday, no one reported on, in the national news media what had occurred to create that selling until way after the fact. So you were late if you didn't know. There were people that took the vaccine in Europe that had negative reactions to the vaccine. Uh, I believe the one patient went into shock. And at the exact time that that happened, the market started selling off. Now, we were already short. That's not the reason I took the trades. Again, it was based on the gap. But I'm saying if you're trading based on news and fundamentals, you're late to the party. You are, you are probably getting hurt this year with all that has occurred, particularly with COVID and obviously the lockdowns as well. And I also, this is a side note, <laughs> and I say this as someone that appears on, on, on news programs, you really cannot rely anymore on one particular news outlet. Things have changed a lot. Now, we may have many very different ages of groups here, but Years and years ago, you could read one newspaper and get everything you need. You could watch one channel and you could get everything you need. Nowadays, people have to do a little bit more homework. Uh, you have to maybe watch several channels, go into social media, read newspapers. It's become more difficult actually to find news and to get news and to find the real, really what's happening to real reporting. That's frustrating even to me as someone that appears on news programs, but it is something that I've become diligent about because of the fact that obviously I'm trading and I'm in the market and I need to be watching positions, especially if I'm in something overnight, okay? So what else happens after the shock, after the panic, then you have what? You have volatility. So the panic that happens out of nowhere 
then equals what? Volatility. Volatility, again, isn't necessarily something that drops. Volatility could be up, okay? Volatility is anything that happens that's unexpected. You can have volatility going up. You could have volatility going down. A lot of people think, well, volatility means selling. Not necessarily. Volatility is anything that occurs that is something that's unexpected, again, which is a result which happens because of the panic. So the panic creates volatility. And you did see that in the market yesterday. You're not really seeing that today, okay? At least not in the overall market. Then the volatility equals what? Momentum. Now, as an active trader or any type of trader, swing trader, day trader, options trader, whatever you're doing, the, the goal really is to get a big move or as big a move as you can. If you're scalping, it's going to be extremely difficult for you to make a lot of money unless you're taking big positions, which means you could be putting a lot of money at risk unless you're trading low float stocks, which I do not do. I find those uh, to be completely uninteresting to trade and low float stocks do, are not traded by institutional money, which I'm going to talk about in a minute as well. So all the stocks we trade are companies, real companies that you shop at, go to, know about, that report earnings and they move, okay? They have volume and they move and they have big moves. For example, if you take 5,000 shares of a stock and it drops a dollar and you're short it, what do you make? $5,000, simple, okay? So we want to trade stocks or I want to trade stocks that have momentum because the momentum equals what? The money, the profits. That is ultimately why you should be trading. Now you may want to trade because you want this to do this for a living. You want extra money on the side. You think it's fun. You've been, you know, going to free webinars for years. Ultimately, I think the only way that people can be successful in reference to trading and making money consistently in the market and the consistency is the biggest point is if you take it seriously. So my program itself, my business, the stock swish, is focused on helping people that are serious about making money and that really want to do it. Uh, my class is a price point of $7,000. So for some people, uh, they think that's high. For me, I think it's cheap because you can learn how to trade for the rest of your life in the class, but it is a commitment to spend $7,000. And ultimately, I find that, you know, for me as a business, I've been in business now for 10 years plus, it has benefited all my clients because I can give them the personal attention by helping them. Um, I've been doing mentoring sessions with people. You have to be committed to doing this if you want to make money. Many people lose in the market. The reason that they lose is they have no clue what to do. You will not learn how to trade and you will not learn how to make money uh, unless you uh, take it seriously. You will not learn how to trade in a one hour seminar. You will not learn how to trade if you watch every single video I have on YouTube, which is about over 3000 videos. You have to take this seriously if you want to do it. And I think anything that you do in life um, if you take it seriously, you will be successful. I think people become frustrated because they think that when they take a trade and they make money very, very quickly, that they just can just do it like that day after day. It's and many people that trade that lose overall over the course of a year, uh, make money some days. The idea is consistently making money Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Yesterday was a huge day for my group because every single trade that I called worked. So it was like 100% win ratio. Why? I had the direction right in the market. We had you know, the day trades that we did were, were profitable too. I, I had the direction right in the market. And that's one of the things, again, I discuss on television. The market has been challenging to read this year. The market has been challenging and choppy the last two months. If you are looking for a market direction in order to make money in trades, you're probably losing right now. So the key thing is to either learn how to read the market right or do specific things that you don't need the market in order to make money, that you don't need to get the market direction right to profit. And the, and the thing I like about the gaps is that on any given day, if I find a quality gap, if I find a good gap that's going to move, I don't need the market. Now, there are days where I see what the market's going to do, like I said, like yesterday, where we'll, we'll do a, a group of trades all in a row with the market, uh, but that is not every single day, okay? So I've developed one system, and it's to trade gaps. And the idea is to make money. And again, it's called the golden gap. So let's go over one of these ones here. This was an earnings trade as well. This was CRM. This was a day trade. This was a big trade uh, because of the fact we added to the position, which I'll show you here. But first, let's go over the daily chart and the gap. This was back last week, I guess it was now. Today's the 10th. 
uh, the stock closed here, gap down. Closed up here at four o'clock, boom, open in the morning. So in the pre-market here, I rated the gap. And then when it opened, we shorted it. We shorted it at 223.50. Now you could say, well, this is kind of expensive. If you wanted to do a put in this, you could have done a put instead of the, the day train. Um, anyways, 1,200 shares was a risk of 26.40. We added once I saw that the stock was going to continue to a bigger number. I doubled up on the position. So then the average price was 223. This had a big move. This continued actually through this move, uh, but this was a beautiful exit, 219.65. And this you can see is in the drop here, boom. And then it bounced. Profit was $8,040. That is a day trade. If you do not have the margin accessible to take 1,200 shares of a stock at 223.15, then you take 100 shares, you take 200 shares. You do not have to take an advanced risk with something like this. Again, day trading is different than options trading in the sense that you don't need margin for options. You can open up a, an options account with $2,000. You would not risk the entire amount in one trade though. The other thing about consistency, which helps people, and I'll say this too, I've realized this teaching people for a long time, is that you must be consistent with your sizing, not just your strategy, but your sizing as well. So you can't risk $2,600 in one trade and then $500 in another trade, specifically with day trading. Now, I have different risks for options than for day trades because I hold options sometimes overnight. So I feel that that's warranted to take more risk. But whichever you decide, you should have the same risk for options for every options trade and the same risk for day trades for every day trade. I get this all the time. People say, oh, I need a lot of money to trade. You, if you go and open up an account at a retail broker, you will get four to one margin. The minimum requirement is 25,000. That would be someplace like Ameritrade. I also talk on their network as well. They have a, they have a live online network where they discuss stocks. But when you're trading with a prop firm, you can trade with a prop firm and you can get 10 to one margin. And the minimum balance to open up an account at some places is only 2,500. So in more 10 to one margin, you have 25,000 in buying power. So you can trade day trade even too with a smaller account. Your risk is different. You can still make money trading with a small account. I had a lady yesterday, she has a small account. She does not take a large risk. She takes about one contract or hundred shares or 200 shares in the day trades. She made $4,300 yesterday. That was a great day for her. Cause again, she did all the trades I called and they all worked. So when people say, I, will, I need this much money, I need this much money, to me, that's an excuse. You're not committed to doing it then if you think you need to wait to have 100 grand. Many people will never have 100 grand because they will continue to trade with whatever they have and lose and lose and lose, and they dig themselves into a hole. You, you have to get to the point where you decide if you really want to do this. And I think that the interesting thing about the times that we're in, which is still we're in this period of COVID, is that a lot of people have now time or accessibility to day trade from home because their employer is not looking over their shoulder and they don't have to go to the office every day. A lot of people are working from home. Now you still may have a full-time job where you have to work from home, but you can watch what's going on in your trades or watch your stocks or watch your charts while you're working from home. Whereas before, maybe you couldn't do that in an office. So you can transition while you're working from home during this COVID period, if you're still somewhere in lockdown or places are going back on lockdown now, where you can take this time to start to focus more on your trading. Half an hour, 45 minutes a day. You don't have to stare at the screen all day in order to make money, okay? And most of these trades are morning setups, okay? Sometimes I'll do things in the afternoon, but most of the trades that I do are in the morning. Why? Because the gap happens in the morning. The gap happens in the pre-market. The gap happens as soon as the open hits, boom, right at 9.30. Now, here was another one. We did big. This actually, uh, this is, I clipped this at 1130 on the day that it gapped. If you go pull up the chart right now, you will see that on this day, this fell like a brick and collapsed the next day. This collapsed on Monday. Kind of wish we had done it Monday. This was a trade. It was a good trade. Um, you could have shorted it, made, you know, 45 cents or a little bit more if you got out of the morning. Profit was 1,125. But I, if you look this up, again, I clipped this on the Friday of the day. This was last, uh, the 4th this fell and went red and collapsed on Monday. So it really did have more follow through. I typically like to get in and out in the morning, but this continued. You know, I think you need to look at every trade as well, whatever your goal is for the day. If your goal is a thousand dollars for the day and then it starts to back up, boom, you take it. You don't have to hold every trade to a piggy target, okay? Unless what? You have the market with you, which in the case of yesterday, we did, okay? If you, were, if you were short stocks, if you were short things. But there are days that we have the market with us and bullish trades as well. 
Um, I don't think I can see people's questions here. Let me see if I can. I don't know if I can. I'll have to look at it at the end. Sorry about that. Um, because I know I'm talking, 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 and I'm not sure if I can see where everything is. Anyways, uh, oh, there. Or I think it's over there, I'm sorry. Um, okay, sorry if I missed people's questions because I didn't have the chat up, I just realized that, or I can look at them at the end. Uh, or Danielle can send them to me or Fosto. Anyways, why do so many people have trouble trading? Uh, because of the fact, okay, that they don't have conviction in what to do. For example, I told you that we were in shorts, we were in options, we were in puts. We got in them, what was the day before yesterday? Yesterday was Wednesday, we got in them Tuesday. We were in shorts Monday and Tuesday and they were short, they were down, okay? They were down, some were up a little, some were down a little, some were flat but people were getting worried then because the market made new highs. I had a lot of conviction and I have conviction in what I do, but a lot of people have trouble trading because they'll go long, they'll go short. They'll short, then they'll kill it. If they take a trade and they're down, they'll kill it. Then they'll retake it in the opposite direction. Then it won't work. Then they'll reverse and they'll kill it. And you see how the market's been so choppy lately that you could just overall be losing if you're doing it, taking it, killing it, taking it, killing it, flipping it around. If you're going long and short the same stock in the same direction the same day, you have zero conviction in what you're doing. So people have trouble trading because they don't know what direction they should be in. Sometimes you can take a trade and the trade will be a good trade in the right direction, but it'll be down before it goes up. I tend to be someone that takes trades whenever I see them, which could sometimes be early. This week was a good example of that. But you know what? Better to be early than late. Because again, you didn't have the same profitability as we had yesterday if you took the market once it started to break late and shorted it at two o'clock in the afternoon. While we continue to fall into the close, that the most of the money was from the high to the low. Okay. So that's how it goes. You have to have conviction. You have to know what you're doing. And, and this is a process. This is a process of learning. It's not like you're going to you're gonna wake up tomorrow and have 100% conviction. It is a process. It happens over time by learning my program, by trading with me, by listening to what I say, uh, by trading, by getting green. Even if the green is $200 a day, I think the consistency of the green is what really helps people. It helps people have the conviction, okay? Uh, this was an options trade we did. Uh, this, is a, this is Facebook. This fell yesterday too. Let me just show you the day that we did this. So I called this on Tuesday the 1st, eight o'clock in the morning. We can't, you can't do options trades until the open, but I send out the letters sometimes, sometimes at six o'clock in the morning if I see something. I'm up early, I rate the gap. We did the Facebook 280 uh, calls. Now let me go back and show you that day. This was the day here. So this closed here, this gapped up. I rated it as a bullish gap to go long. Okay, so we did calls and then it took off like a rocket. It basically went almost to the dream target, which was 290. This is a good trade. You take it, you get out. You take it, you get out. Boom. Again, you could have been in this a second day, but this is a good trade. This is profit. If you can take an options trade just because of the fact that you have, maybe I call it to the Friday. You see here, if you would have held it to Friday, you would have lost. You have to be very careful when you're doing really anything, not just options for timing, for, for anything. You don't want to miss your exit. I don't know why anyone wouldn't have gotten out of this here, but anyways, here was the trade. Cost was 480. An advanced trader risk was 20 contracts, 9,600, sold at 10. You could have made $10,400. This is getting in and out in one day on the first. Now, what if you, oh, this is a mistake here. I'll have to fix this with my assistant. $960 would have been two contracts. Sorry about that, not 9,600. 480 is the same cost again you could have made $1,440 risking 960. That's a good trade, okay? That's a, that's a beautiful trade. That is more than 100% return on investment in a trade that you took in one day, okay? Really, when I'm doing options, 50% return on investment, I think is a good trade, particularly in this market, particularly in this type of choppy market. We're not getting a lot of follow through with things. We're just not. So you have to pick and choose the quality trades again. 
And actually today, we didn't do any day trades today at all. Why? Because I was aware of what happened with the gap down this morning. I was aware what was going on about what people were going to do. There wasn't any good earnings. There wasn't any good gaps on their own. I was aware of the market. I said, there's nothing good today. We're not going to do anything. So when you don't see any quality trades, then you don't do anything. Okay. And you book money when you get the good ones. Here was the market. This was the same day. This was the day the market gapped up too. This is the QQQs. Again, where's the gap? Closed here, gapped up. Boom, rally. Could have done this as a day trade. You could have done this as a call. I called calls in it too. Again, eight o'clock in the morning. The 302 calls we did in the queues. Got in another one day. This is very reasonable. $2.25 for one. You could have taken three contracts, spent $675 profit with 600. That is a beautiful trade. Many people are losing. This is, you don't need to make thousands and thousands. If this is all you can afford, again, if you have a $2,500 options account, this is a trade that you can afford to take. And then you can build your account from there and you build it up. If you can risk more, $78.75, you could have made $7,000. Again, almost 100%. But again, you're in, you're out. You're in, you're out. While this could continue, I didn't look at the price of this on Friday the 4th, it's better to get in and out of the day, book the money, get the money back in your account that you're using to risk on the trade, and then I'll call another trade because I call many, many trades, okay? Again, uh, sometimes I call them in a group, which I did on this particular day because I was reading the market. So anyways, getting back to what I was talking about here with conviction, you know, we're in this period of time right now where everybody is in flux with their lives because you'll be going along and everything's fine. And then you could live in a state or you could live in a different country where the government then is telling you what to do or changing your job, or you don't know if you should move or where you should live or what's happening. Everyone's worried about this thing. People are there. I found that people are very uh, hesitant right now. And that is very deadly for your trading. Your mindset has to be I almost, I said, almost like make a bubble, like make a bubble for yourself. If you can't make a bubble all day, make a bubble for 30 minutes or an hour a day where you're going to trade. Just make that bubble and ignore every single thing else that's happening in your life. Everything else, the kids, the dogs, the pets, whatever, anything that's happening with the world, turn off the news and focus on what you're doing with your trading, making money that should be your number one goal. And, and you should have a strategy to trade. And if you don't, that's something that you'd come and learn from me. Yes, you need 25,000 to trade at a retail brokerage account, like for example, Ameritrade. You do not need 25,000 to trade at something called a proprietary day trading account. If you don't know what that is, you can Google it or you can email me and I can refer you to one. There's many, many out there. You have to investigate and find the ones you want to go to, okay? But there are places you can trade without 25,000, yes. And in reference to doing options, you don't need 25,000. Again, I said, you can open up an options account with $2,000. You do not need margin to day trade options. Now, if I call 30 options trades in a week and you don't have the money to take them all, well, you're not gonna take them all. Then you take one, then you take two, then you take five, okay? Again, the idea is if you're starting with a, a smaller account, and when I say small, I mean under $5,000, then you have to build it up. You take it from five to 10, from 10 to 20 and so on and so forth. And then you increase your risk as you go over time. I mean, everybody wishes they had, you know, a million dollar account to trade, but guess what? If you don't know how to trade, you're going to lose that money anyways. So having more money doesn't necessarily mean you're going to do well. Some people have a lot of money and trade the market and they lose. I mean, all you have to do is Google and watch people doing crazy things. It happens all the time. I'm on TV many times with people that say stuff that I can't even believe they're saying this and I know that they're wrong and I turn out to be right and I know those people lost when they said they did something. But what are you gonna do? There's a lot of people that lose money in the market. There's rich people that lose money in the market. So don't forget that. And, and, and this is just about knowing what to do. The benefit of being a human being with a brain is that you know you can learn how to do this and you can grow over time and become wealthy. Um, and uh, all you have to do is use your brain. While it would be ideal if you had XYZ amount to start out, 
uh, at the end of the day, as long as you reach your goal of become, being successful, the money will come over time. If someone told you that in 10 years from now, uh, you could have a million dollars cash in a trading account, would you do everything you needed to do to get it? I would think you would. But the problem is that many people don't believe that's possible. And the reason that they feel that that's not possible is because they're losing right now in the market and they don't even have 25,000 like that gentleman just said. So they think there's no way I could ever make that kind of money. It builds on itself once you know what to do. And if you don't know what to do, you will never make it. It doesn't matter how much money you have, okay? You have to have the knowledge. The knowledge gives you the conviction. The conviction brings the money and that's how it goes, okay? And one of the reasons that, you know, I'm a good mentor for people is because I can help people stabilize in that regard, because I help people with the conviction part of it. I mean, I had to talk some people off of a ledge this week who almost killed those puts before the market fell yesterday. And, you know, and I say to people, listen, if you're nervous about a trade, you have too many shares on, you risk too much. If you're worried about a trade losing, cut your risk back. You know, that's, it's just as simple as that. You're better off taking one contract or 100 shares and letting the trade play out. If you want to kill something when it doesn't go the second that you take it, which some trades do, some trades don't. If you don't want to, if you want to kill something after you take it, then nine times out of 10, your risk is too big. Cut it back, cut it back until you learn and understand how to hold on and wait for something to go. Um, these, well, I'm going over several trades here. These were calls that I just talked about in the queue on Facebook. Um, big was a short. This is a short, this was Zoom. We did this on the day that we were long. And actually we did Zooms yesterday too, but I don't have that trade in here. This closed here, this gap down. This closed up here the night before, again, around 475-ish, and then opened in the morning here around 430 and change. And we shorted it and it fell. And we did an option, we did two options in it too. I have one in here. So here's a one minute. This closed here, gap down, fell off a cliff, boom. You could have taken many different entries in here. Here's what we did. Again, this is expensive. You could do an option in this too. I'll go over the one we did in a minute. Entry was 428.25, stop was 434.65, 600 shares was a $3,200 risk. So maybe you wouldn't only take 100 shares of this. Exit, this, this really, the stock can move though. This is a fun stock to trade. 411.85 profit, 9,840. This is a day trade. Okay, this is a day trade. I'm gonna go back here and show you what it did. It fell, it sold off. So this was a short. Now, if you have an options account, you could have done a put. So here was the put. Again, same day, this is the Zoom. I called this a little bit later, 1030. I called the 410 strike in the Zoom because I saw that it was gonna be heading to a much larger number, okay? A 10, 1025 for one contract. So one contract would have cost you 1025 and you could have made 675. So you could have done this really as a quick trade later in the morning, later in the day, if you didn't do the day trade or you could have done both. So I like to do both. And I always tell people, talk about conviction. If I do a day trade and an option in the same stock on the same day, then that's good. That's an amazing gap. And there are days that we do that. Not every day, but some days. Um, I don't all I, I buy, I, I go in the direction of the gap when the gap rates for my system. I only buy calls and I only buy puts. That's what I do. So I don't have an opinion on anything else. That's what I do. I'm playing the momentum. I'm playing the gap, just like we talked about at the beginning. Why? This is panic. This is momentum. When a stock drops 20, 30 dollars on the day, this is selling, selling action that came into the zoom. We shorted it. So we shorted it and we made money and it dropped to the downside. If you bought it, this is the 20 pair moving average here in the blue line. This is the eight. If you bought it, you lost, you lost. People are buying the market today. I don't know where it's at right now. If I have time, I'll look at the market and I'll tell you what I think right now in this second. Um, but let's, let's get through this here. But this, I only buy puts and I only buy calls. Uh, we did Apple too. This was the day, again, the market was up and we this rallied, this was a nice trade. So this was, again, the morning of December 1st, boom, for the open, called the 121 calls, take it, get out, boom. This was super duper cheap. Dollar 60, 50 contracts, 8,000 sold at three, boom. Almost 100% return on investment. Again, in, out, 
five contracts risk 800 make 700 this is how you take a two thousand dollar account and make it a three thousand dollar account and you take a three thousand dollar account and you make it a four thousand dollar account you must take the trades and book the money this closed here this gapped up rally boom went through the strike out boom and that was it it was done i was on the same day so how do i do it? what's my system it's a checklist that's what you'd learn in the class from me my class, my last class for the year is this weekend, December 12th and 13th, uh, and it is a long class. It is all day Saturday, all day Sunday, one hour break for lunch. It's a 14 hour class where you learn my entire system. It's a 26 point rating system. That's how I pinpoint which stock I'm going to trade in what direction. And it's also how I have learned and taught myself how to so well trade, uh, trade the market. And I do look at the market when I'm making decisions, because if I want to do something with the market or the market's going to power trend, those could be very profitable days. And those are also days where I will hold something into the close. I prefer to trade the morning, but if I know I have the market with me, then I'll hold something a little bit longer. The meat and potatoes of what I do is the golden gap rating system, and it's the checklist. So you can make money trading gaps with day trades or options. Using my system, it's called the Golden Gap. The rating system is the same. It's just how you're placing the trades. And the system is based on institutional money. It's based on big positions, big traders, institutional money, hedge funds. Um, and again, you know, very often, if you're following news of fundamentals, you're late to the party for getting moves. The focus for me is on the institutional money. I'm reading it in the gap. Are they going to buy it or are they going to sell it in the gap? Uh, yesterday we did Zoom, okay? We did the Zoom, we did puts in the Zoom, we did a day trade in the Zoom, this fell again. Closed here, gap down, fell off a planet. This was a beautiful trade. It's actually open lower this morning too. You could have still been in the puts and got out of them today into the open. They expire tomorrow. So again, this is selling. So we bought puts and we shorted that too, but the focus was the gap and the focus on the volatility, okay? So again, where are you gonna get pain with momentum? And how is that created with the volatility? And then how do you make a lot of money with share size? So you just plop on the size and that's how you can make 10, $20,000 in, in one day, even trading. And one trade or several trades, but you have to get to the point where you understand what you're doing or you can't risk the money. I mean, why would you risk several thousand dollars or even 500 bucks if you don't know what you're doing? I find that strange of people who are willing to just to just willy nilly risk money in, in, in the market and they have no clue what they're doing. They have no strategy, don't know what they're doing, don't know why they're doing it. They'll turn on the television and hear somebody say something and do a trade and they don't know why they're doing it. You can't be like that. You have to look at every dollar that you risk or spend in the market as serious business. And again, if you take it seriously, then you're gonna have a higher percentage chance to make it and I know it's fun making money, but you have to be a little bit patient with yourself. I say, chunk it out, make a goal for the week. Like today we didn't do any trades, but we really, all of us have made our goal for the week already. I'm sure we'll do something tomorrow. There's a lot of things out tonight. If you want to travel to the trading room, you can email me at melissathestockswish.com. You can come in for one day tomorrow before the class, but the class is this weekend. You've got to chunk it out. You've got to focus on one thing. And in this particular environment right now that we're in in 2020, you know, I've just heard so many stories from so many people. Don't wait to the last minute till things get bad for you that you decide you want to do something different for your, with your life. If you know you're not happy with your job or you know you're not happy with the money that you're making trading or, or what you're doing for a living, don't wait till it gets so bad that you can't do anything else. Make a move now. Start to think about your future. Plan ahead. Uh, people used to plan ahead years ago. Now we live in a society and a culture where everything is me, 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 and now, 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 and yesterday. And, and no wonder people are suffering, okay? Plan ahead, plan for the future, make an investment in yourself. Trading and learning and doing a class like mine is an investment in your future. That's what it is. Well, while you can make the seven grand from my class back in one trade or one day or one week, depending on how much you're risking, that should not be your goal. Your goal should be to learn how to do it for the rest of your life, similar to what I'm doing. So I understand that risking money can be hard for people, but everything has a cost. Everything has a cost. Right now I'm in New York. I love New York. I've been stayed here through the whole entire year of 2020. Things in New York are worse probably than they are anywhere. And, and the whole entire city is just, it's just a mess. It's just such a mess. I can't even go on about it. I could talk about it all day. I'm sticking through it. I'm probably going to stay. I'm probably going to stick it out. Uh, there, there will be a reward for people that are willing to do that financially, real estate-wise opportunities, because many people can't stick, stick this out. 
Um, you know, and so everything has a cost. Everything has a sacrifice. If you think about it, if you have goals for the future and things you want to do, your dreams are achievable with money, time, and hard work. A lot of people are willing to put in the time and work, but they don't want to spend the money. A lot of people are cheap. We are not going to get anywhere that way. Some of the most successful people in the world put time and investment and money into things and they build businesses. And I understand everybody is impatient, but it just doesn't work that way. You have to be somewhat realistic with your goals. But if you are, you can get there. And I'm definitely helping people do it. And it does become easier over time because as you make money, your conviction grows. And then your confidence grows. You can say conviction, you can say confidence. It's really all the same thing, you know, together in a, in, in a ball. So day trading is something that I do. You can do options, you can do day trades. It's all one strategy. Let me see here if I have any, uh, something about the close. How much time does it take to identify? Well, how much time do, I don't know what you mean by the end of the close. Again, I wait till the morning in the pre-market. How much time does it take to rate the gaps? Well, I do it very quickly. I could do it in you know less than five minutes. If you're new, I'd say get up early, take your time. It might take you 10 minutes to rate one, but I'm not rating a thousand things every day. I look at something, I make a small watch list and then I rate them. And I would say start to get organized by eight o'clock, 8.30 in the morning, market opens at 9.30. You, don't, you can't sit down at 9.15 and then expect to figure out what you're doing. If you're in the live trading with me, I'm telling you what I like every day. That's the benefit of being there. And then I'm calling the trades live in the room. I'm giving you the entries and the exits and the stop in the room live, like all the ones we talked about here today. Okay, and like I said today, we didn't do anything. And, and if I have time here at the end, I think I might, I'll, I'll show, you, show you what I saw in the market. Uh, but anyways, a big part of becoming successful is really just getting, getting down it. I say getting grounded, okay? The best thing, like right now you gotta get grounded. And again, I appear on news TV, but if you turn on the television right now in any given channel, I mean, it, you can really get in a negative space about what's happening in the world, whether it's politics, whether it's COVID, just, you know, you got, you have to be so grounded right now because what matters is your life and you. And if you're not positive and focused on what you're doing, you can very easily slip into despair right now with what's happening in the world. Don't go there, okay? Be aware of what's happening in the world, but you have to be very grounded in the choices that you're making. I had a person that was up money the other day in a trade. The, uh, she was up $800. She didn't get out. It moved against her really quickly. I said, the trade's still good. I'm still in it. I still like it. I didn't think it was up enough to get out. But I said, if I was you, I probably would have got out and booked the 800 because her goal for the week was only $1,500. So she, she could have made half her goal for the week in one trade and she didn't get out of it. And then she panicked. And then she wanted to kill it when it was up and down. It was an options trade. And then it went the next day and went huge. But I said, listen, you have to get in touch with yourself. If you can't, if you, $800 is $800. If that's half your goal for the week, you should have gotten out. That's it. Boom. Everybody is in a different place financially. $800 to somebody is their rent right now. It's food on the table or it's not. And everyone keeps talking about Congress and the stimulus. Uh, Steve Mnuchin said something today and then the market was rallying back. I'm telling you, I would not bet my life on the fact they're going to pass a stimulus bill in the next week before they leave for the, for the year. I really don't think that's going to happen. People are betting on that money. You, you have to look out for yourself. You have to think about your own goals. You have to stay grounded. Um, and remember, just learning, learning is everything. Let me just see if there's any other questions. Okay. All right. So um, yes. So day trading is what I do. The rating system, what are you going to learn? It's, it teaches you a high probability of directional bias for the entire trading day. Big move of the day, early confirmation of the bias on the move between 9.30 and 10. And precise entries with follow through and a good risk to reward target potential. So again, I'm trying to get in the trades in the morning. Even if I hold it, I'm trying to get in it. We talked about this. We talked about chunking it out. Uh, my class is called the Golden Gap System. It's a 26-point professional bearish gap rating system. The bullish class is in January. The bearish class is this weekend. The purpose of the system is to help you evaluate which gap to trade each morning using the checklist. This checklist tells you what to trade, when, and in what direction. The 26-point checklist predicts directional bias in a stock. And that is the reason I'm successful. I'm very good at what I do. 
I'm, I'm, I'm very, very blessed. I have a skill set and a talent. And if you come and learn from me, you will be blessed to listen to what I say every day. And while every trade that I take does not work, so many of them do. And, so, and I have something called a sixth sense. It's an intuition for the trades like that we did yesterday. It was, it was, it was based on the gap rating system, but I also have a high intuition where I know sometimes that something's going to happen before it does. I really saw that also with the COVID. I think I want to say it was March. I'll pull up a chart. It was early in March before it happened. And we, we were in puts before that gap down happened in the market in, in, in the lockdown. The, the thing is that when you do something for a very, 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 very long time, every single day, thousands and thousands of hours, you do develop a sixth sense. I've been trading since 2008 and I've not done anything but gaps. I developed my own system over three years. It's been 12 years going on 13. This is all that I do. It's all I will ever do. If you flip flop around with doing many, many different things, you're never going to get good at one thing. And it's going to be really hard for you to make money, whether it's a hundred bucks or a thousand dollars or a million dollars, you're never going to get there. If you flip around, you must get good at this. There's so many people that want to make money in the market and so many people uh, you know, are drawn in by the green factor. You can want money. I, I mean, money is my goal, but there's a difference between money and greed. And again, that comes back down to the grounding part of it, where you have to set your sights on what you want to do and be serious about it too. So one strategy is all you need to be successful in the market. You do not need a general overall broad base of view to make money. Again, you use a lot, very often the fundamentals are after the fact. And if you can learn how to read institutional money and price patterns and gaps, you don't need to do anything else. And, 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 and really, people have had a very good year with me. But it's been an active year. We'll see what happens next year. Uh, I teach a class. It's called the Golden Gap Course. It's this weekend, 12th and 13th, 9 to 5 Eastern Time. Class is online. You can be anywhere in the world and take it. It's $69.99 US dollars. You must email me to sign up. The deadline is not November 15th. Again, that's another mistake. I've talked to my assistant. The deadline's tomorrow. So you can sign up by December 11th. So remember, education is a gift to yourself. And if you want to just sign up for the options newsletter, that's $69.99 a year. You won't learn the system. You get the options trades. You would have gotten the Apple one, the, the uh, Qs, the Zoom. It's one year subscription. Trades are emailed to you. You take them when you get the, when you get the letter. And I'm doing a special. I think Fosto has this. It's trading room free for one year if you sign up for the class this weekend by tomorrow, which is a great deal. Now, let me just pull up my charts really quickly here and see. Can you see anything here? Or does it come up? My charts come up. I'll just, the last five minutes here, I'll just give you. Can you see it or not? Shoot. Um, you can. Let me say stop share. See if this works. Does that work? Uh, I'll just briefly give you this in the last two minutes here, and then I'll then I'll let everybody go, and Faso can get on. Um, so. When I got up this morning, we gapped down today, but we didn't do any day trades because I said, well, we're going to fall, we're lower, but I don't know where we hold. And that's the situation and why, because the market is in an uptrend. Here's the market. I'm just going to look at the cues really quickly here for you. So this is the market. It's strong. It made new highs yesterday or the other day or whatever. It's fine. Made new highs. This is strong. So when you have, when you have something in an uptrend and a strong, strong trend, which this is, again, I shorten uptrends. I shorten downtrends. I do it all. Uh, but ultimately, when you have something like this, you don't know where it's going to hold. Why? There really is no resistance in this. So even though we're lower, you don't know where we're going to hold. Why? Because there's no resistance. Why? Because we're in an uptrend because we're strong. But I do think the market temporarily right now is not going to continue higher for many, many reasons uh, based on the gaps, based on the buying, based on the selling, based on fundamental reasons, COVID stimulus, whatever you want to talk about. But today, there really wasn't any play because I'm not going to go long this. And then I'm also not going to short this because I didn't know where we'd hold. Now it's 1255. Will we sell up into the close? We could. Where will we gap tomorrow morning? I don't know. But there are people here that have got sucked in today that are going along this market into support. Yes, it's strong. Yes, it's in an uptrend, but I don't think we have any follow through here. I would be shocked if we have follow through and go over the highs uh, tomorrow. I don't think that's going to happen. So today was a day to just rest, stay silent, take it easy, wait for the next setup which could happen tomorrow morning or possibly on Monday. Don't forget, there's really only, you know, I'd say eight, nine, 10 trading, good trading days left here before the end of the year, because Christmas is that, that um, Christmas I think is Friday. 
So then people are gonna leave on Thursday. So you have all next week and then three days after that. So you really got to be careful into this holiday period what you do. And, um, and it was no surprise to me here that we pushed back today, but I would not be long this. And I wouldn't be surprised if we fall and we're trying to fall right now. So it'll be interesting to see where we close today. I'll try to do a video and put it on YouTube tonight. If, if you wanna go subscribe to YouTube. Any questions here? Let me just look up. Thank you. Thanks for having me, everybody. Stay safe wherever you are in the country and in the world. And um, have a great holiday. Thanks, Fasto, for having me. Happy uh, holidays to everybody. Melissa, thanks for coming. And uh, that was a great presentation. Sometimes to Puglisi, president founder of Cybertree University. I hope you guys really enjoyed the event that we're doing as of right now regarding our Cyber Expo. We had some great speakers. And uh, right after I go, I'm having another great presenter, a very good friend of mine, Hubert Centers. And looking forward to hear him too.